I know these streaming services are not great for musicians, I know that, but they are wonderful for music students and they're wonderful for getting the music out there. <laughs> Hi there, welcome along to today's vlog. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Today we're talking about Apple Music Classical. Apple Music brought out Apple Music Classical on Tuesday of this week, today's Thursday, and I'm giving you my first 48 hours of a hands-on experience of this great new app. Now I've been a professional musician for 25 years, I've been studying music for 30 odd years, and I still can find classical music intimidating, so it's no wonder that a lot of us, we might enjoy classical music, but we don't know where to start, it feels intimidating, it feels beyond us, and yet actually there's a great, there's a phenomenal pool of music out there which most of us would actually enjoy but we feel it's not for us. We fall for the marketing scam, we fall for the idea that we have to have our genre, our likes, or what we do. And that's so wrong because there is so much music out there that all of us could enjoy and if you're playing an instrument, whether you're playing it as an amateur, as a semi-pro, as a student, as a fellow professional, whatever level you're at, you're missing out on this rich tapestry of music because you're too intimidated by it. And that's why I think Apple Music Classical is gonna open so many new doors to you. It's opened doors to me in just the 48 hours I've been using it. Now the first thing you'll notice is it's very much like Apple Music's interface that you may have already come across if you're already an Apple Music user. I know some of you might be using Spotify, etc. I'm an Apple fanboy, I'm in the Apple ecosystem, it's there. So the great thing is you've got this kind of usual splash screen with lots of stuff across the top, some things that Apple's algorithm thinks you're interested in. But what I really like are these stories. These are, there are explanations and, you know, kind of non-patronizing ways of trying to get you into classical music, which I think is a really, really good place to start. You can search by composer, period, genre, conductor, orchestra, soloist. You can even search by instrument if you want to. Um, here I am looking at some of the choirs. Um, I really like vocal music. I really like choral music. Um, being in Cambridge, of course, it's great. And we have, of course, King's College Cambridge. Um, very, very pleased to be able to go and hear these boys and men sing as much as I can. And here is one of my favorite works, the Bernstein Chichester Psalms. Obviously, I can't play this to you on here without losing and getting copyright strikes. So I'm just kind of showing you the interface as we go along. Of course, one of the great things you've got with Apple Music, you've got uh, Dolby Atmos, the um, Apple surround sound system. What's it called now? Spatial audio, that's what I'm thinking of. Now, that's only available if you've got AirPod Pros, whether the AirPod Pro is normal like I've got or the Max. I actually went to try and buy some AirPod Maxes this week. They've literally sold out. Apparently some TikToker has done some video wearing these um, AirPod Maxes and no one can get hold of them. Um, I wanted to try and, I've been into the shop, was listening to some more stuff. Sadly, I couldn't access Apple Music Classical in the Apple shop, which I thought was poor. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's great. One of the things that I've come across time and time again when I'm talking to top level professional musicians in any field is that they keep saying, broaden your listening, broaden your listening, broaden your listening. Uh, it's the same 12 notes, no matter what music you're listening to within Western music, it's all there. And so can I really encourage you to listen more? Um, so get the Apple Music Classical app if um, you're on Apple Music, if you're not, maybe tempting, maybe switch for a month, go away from Spotify. Um, and, and try Apple Music out. I know these streaming services are not great for musicians, I know that, but they are wonderful for music students and they're wonderful for getting the music out there. And if you can find new composers, new works that you enjoy listening to, then I believe that Apple Music Classical is gonna be doing a real good. My only question is gonna to be to Apple. Apple, when can we have Apple Music Jazz?
some of you have asked recently why we don't do more vlogs, why I don't do more vlogs. Well, to go to the extent of getting like a minute of B-roll for you, this is now the weather. And I'm shooting a time-lapse. I've just taken the drone up for that bit of footage you've just seen. And now it is absolutely heaving it down. Um, um, don't have a coat. Wasn't a clever idea, was it, Dan? So the thing that I found myself doing is navigating back towards uh, music I've already heard before, such as like Borgia Cello Concerto, Haydn's 103rd Symphony, Mozart's 40th, all works that I did as part of my A-level music 27, eight years ago. So I'll put those into a playlist for you below if you're on Apple Music Classical, you can check those out. I'm going to try and do a few more classical playlists for Apple Music Classical as we go through. Um, I would definitely recommend it, check it out, let me know what you think. Let me know what your favourite classical pieces are, what pieces would be on your playlist. Um, not just saxophone wise, you know, what music should we be listening to in order to broaden our musical horizons. One final thing I want to talk about today and that's this, and it's this. 75, 76, 78, 78 days of consecutive practice and then we were away for this weekend. I didn't take a saxophone with me. It was my mum's 70th birthday. We all got together as a family and it just didn't feel right to practice. To be honest, from about here to here was a real slog to actually practice and the actual quality of my practice went down significantly. Whereas I've had a break and the last three days have been really good practice. So I've put together a 10 step uh, practice infographic, which you can get if you're on my mailing list. It would have been sent out to the sax coach mailing list yesterday. And one of the things I've put on there is take breaks. And I'm gonna talk about that in future vlogs. So make sure you're subscribing. Thanks very much for watching today. I hope you find Apple Music Classical exciting. And I say, I really hope they bring out a jazz version very, very soon.